Hello and welcome to XYZ. In this tutorial, we will create the audio visualizer I named Plexus 1. There is also a part 1 and 2 in this tutorial series where I'll look at creating a linear and radial visualizer. If you are new to animation nodes, you might want to check them out before continuing with part 3. First, we will instance and place some particle emitters into the scene. Then we will use the location of the emitted particles to drive the style for this visualizer. You will find the audio file I used down in the description below, as well as some useful things about Blender and animation notes. So let's get started. So for this visualizer style, we're going to start off with another curve circle. The circle will, will help us uh, later on define the size of the center portion where there won't be any visualizer visible. And next we're going to bring in a plane. This plane will be used to emit particles and will be uh, positioned along the curved circle. And with that, we use the particles to define the style of the visualizer later. In the first step, we are going to position the emitters the way we want to and emit the particles the way we want to. So the emitter, we... Head over to the particle settings and add particles and let's make the end exactly the same as however long our animation should run. The lifetime should be fine at 50 for now. I mean you can adjust these settings later on and this will define, help define the, the style in the end. And we want to emit from faces and use the modifier stack because later we're gonna add some modifiers to our plane that will help position it better. We also don't want to have any gravity on these. That looks already pretty good. And let's head over to animation notes and create a new note graph. And we're gonna bring in our curve circle. And we're gonna use that circle and uh, do another evaluate. Let's switch that over to single. So animation node doesn't create an extra node. And we use again range count. And we wanna instance our emitter. So here we bring our emit in and we want to sync up uh, the amount of points on our spline with the uh, instanced emitters. So there's always the same amount. Let's make 10 of them. And since we want to have uh, want to use particles we have to make a full object copy because otherwise only the plane will be instanced but not the particles and also the same goes for the modifiers later on they will only be instanced with the object if we make a full copy of them So 
So let's position them by using another matrix output node. And we won't be able to use the matrices that come out of the evaluate spline since um, the emitters won't be positioned the right way. I want them to face away from the center in a ra radial manner and emit the particles away from the center and not to the into the C position. So we are going to create a custom matrix and we're gonna compose one and we wanna compose location, rotation and scale. We use the location from our evaluate spline node. Then we bring in a direction to rotation node and use the normals as the direction. Let's uh, look at our matrices with the 3D viewer node. And I want to switch the X and Y axis. And with that, we can bring that already in and they're positioned the way we want them to. But we will encounter a problem since it looks like uh, the particles will stick to the emitter and are not emitted away from it. And this seems to be a limitation of animation node and blender, since animation node will adjust the uh, position, rotation, and scale uh, every frame. So blender th thinks uh, the plane is constantly moving, and with that uh, resets the particle emission. So they're always starting right at the plane surface for every frame. And we can get around that by, let's get in timeline to also see that. And the moment we uh, delete the connection of our objects, the objects will still stay in place. But with this animation node isn't constantly updating them. And with that, the particle emission works as expected. So we need some kind of workaround with this problem. And let's bring in a switch and bring in our objects. And when our condition is true, we are updating our emitter. So every time we change anything about our emitters, we have to set the condition to true for a second, and then we can switch it off again and it will work as expected. So I bring in Boolean and hook that up. And let's give that a color so we will find this node easily in our node graph. Let's give that the same color. And we can even rename it. So if we would switch this to 15, nothing would update for now. But when we set the Boolean to true for a second, everything will update. So every time we want to change anything about our emitters, we have to set the Boolean to true for a second and 
then switch it off again. So what's still missing is the scale, and for that we're gonna have to do a bit of math. So we are going to mm, divide And we're going to divide one by however many emitters we want to have around our circle. And let's bring in two float values. That will be used uh, to manually adjust the x and y scale of our planes so one will be emitter scale x and the other will be emitter scale y and let's make them blue again and set them to one for now. We're gonna multiply both of those values with our fraction. And then create a vector out of it. Since for a plane only x and y is important, we just leave the c at 1. And let's bring in our vector. And let's update it. And we see it's right there. Let's get the initial instance object out of the way and they're scaled and now we can adjust the scale of x and y independently and manually make them a bit smaller in y and wider in x and what i don't like is that the plane is completely straight. I would like to curve it towards the circle. And for that, we are going to use some uh, modifiers on our initial emitter. So we bring in a subdivision surface, and that doesn't let us do it since we already made copies so let's switch that off for now and this should always be above the particle settings and we also want to use a shrink wrap and the subdivisions we go with three and do them simple and for the shrink wrap, we need to bring in another object, and I'm going to use a UV sphere for that. And I'm going to parent it to uh, the circle. So when we adjust the circle later, the sphere will always follow and adjust with it. And with that, we can actually bring the sphere out of the way and not make it render since we don't want it to show up in the render later. And bring the sphere in here. And we switch the mode to target normal project.
and then let's see how if it works let's switch that back to 10. And now the emitter curves around the circle or more around the sphere we brought in. Let's bring in a visibility output node here so we can adjust that later if we want to. And we want to bring the emitters all into a single collection so we can get them later on easier. They should be linked and we are going to need a new collection. And with that, they're showing up. What we will also notice is that every emitter is emitting the particles at the same position. So they're a perfect copy of each other which might be noticeable later on or not but we definitely want to switch that and for that we want to control the seed of every of our emitter instances so we need an extra node in here and this one will be the attribute output node and we right click on our emitter seed and copy the data path and we copy it into this node and we want to have multiple values and the value will come from a random number node switch that to a list mode and bring in our integer into the count and let's make it between 0 and 100. So this will output, in this case, 10 numbers between 0 and 100. And create a list out of it. And since we are looking for an integer and not a float value, since most seed values will be integer values, we gonna run a ceiling on this values and link that in and with that uh, every emitter should have a different seed value and we switch off the boolean and our particles are emitted just the way we want them so after we created our emitter and placed placed them around a Bezier circle. We're going to use uh, the emitted particles to get the style of our visualizer. And for that, I'm going to bring in a collection collection info node. And here I want to get in our emitter collection and I want to loop through the object list in here so as a new iterator I'm going to get an object list this will be our emitters and let's rename that to generate splines So here we 
by going into the particle system section and bring in a from object node. And the second one is the particle data node, which will in turn give us the location of our emitted particles. And the next node will be in the mesh, mesh section under operators, find close points. We'll link in our locations, set it to distance. And we can use uh, the, the, the edge indices that this node creates to create splines out of. So let's link up the edge indices and the vertex locations. And this will give us the splines. And those we can output as objects. And we don't just want a single object, but we need an object for every emitter that we generate. So let's uh, tidy up the scene real quick. We're going to bring in an object instancer and instance the curve objects or the spline objects. And we're going to use uh, the objects, the emitter objects to drive our instances. So however many uh, emitter objects we are going to have, we have the same amount of spline objects in the scene. They will always be linked up. And let's invoke our sub program and link up the emitters and let's create another object list for our splines. And we want to have that uh, the full object copy and the deep copy active. We link the objects and the splines. To see what is going on, we're going to reduce the viewport display of our particles. when we play that there are splines but the particles don't seem to move right so I'm gonna adjust the boolean in our emitter placement section so the particle systems work right and now they're actually moving outward and we are generating splines. And these splines are generated based on the max distance value. So the lower the value, the less splines will be generated. And I actually want to go ahead and use the sound spectrum to drive the max distance of the particles. So let's head over to the video sequencer, load in our sound real quick, and I'm gonna reduce the volume again so it doesn't disturb in the recording. Let's get over to animation notes again and bring in the sound sound spectrum and we're gonna need a time info node and load in the actual sound file in here and we want to hand off the spectrum to the loop so we're gonna need a float list
and let's get in a math note so we can multiply the spectrum value and actually have some manual control over it. And let's see what that does. No, there ain't no stopping it enters already based on the spectrum. And I'd like to have a bit more control over this, so I'm going to generate some float values that will help us do that. So first I want to have a distance value. where we can set uh, the distance to a complete manual value. So we can have a visualizer that isn't driven by the spectrum at all. And then I'm going to have the spectrum influence. and the spectrum multiplier. And the spectrum multiplier will be what's going into the math node. And then we are going to bring in a mix float. And we're gonna hook the multiplied spectrum into the second input and we use the distance as our first input and the spectrum influence will drive the factor between those two values. Clamp the factor to the zero and one uh, value range. And let's uh, tidy that up a little bit. And with that, we have the value showing up in our sub program. And with the spectrum influence and also the spectrum multiplier set to one, we should have the full uh, spectrum influence going. And with no, with the spectrum influence set to zero, we should actually have a full manual value that we can manipulate. But we can also blend seamlessly between those two. So in certain sections we can have a little bit of splines going on and where the spectrum value is pretty high there will be a lot more. We can also control the multiplier of the spectrum and with that achieve whatever style we want. We can go really dense or we can go barely anything. So let's activate the bevel depth. And with that we could be done. What I would like to do is go into the uh, emitter settings and set a random lifetime so we can have a bit of randomness going on in the particles. And let's uh, set 
spectrum influence maybe a bit higher and the distance a bit lower. No, there ain't no stopping us. No, there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. And let's set uh, the playback to frame dropping. Because Blender is nowhere near getting to 30 frames a second because of all the calculation it has to do. And with that, we could just uh, render out our splines. But we can also push it a bit further and actually uh, do some shader effects based again on the spectrum so we can blend multiple colors together and for that we're gonna bring in first a visibility output node this one will help us to quickly hide and unhide the splines and then in the mesh section we're gonna do a mesh input and get the actual mesh from the splines we just generated and since we have a mesh we can actually in the mesh data we have an inset vertex color layer And we can set the vertex colors for our newly generated meshes. And let's do an object output. And we don't just want to have a single mesh, but use this mesh to instance it so that we can have as many. Uh, mesh objects as we have emitters again like we did with the spline objects So let's duplicate the instancer, get in the mesh object, and also hook up the get length node. So we generate the right amount of instances, and we can leave the full object copy and deep copy on. And let's get in another object list into our loop. This will be for the meshes. And there they are. Let's make sure that we have vertex colors on them. And with that, we can create a shader. And I will do another emission shader. And 
get in the vertex colors. And let's separate the RGB values and use the red channel to drive the factor of our mix shader node. And there is nothing rendering for now since our copies don't have the material yet. We have to refresh them by just quickly deactivating the deep copy and activating it again. And now we see our materials popping up. But we're not blending between anything yet, since we will set the vertex colors to just a single color for all of them. And we are going to bring in a combined color node. Let's disable uh, the always execution and just uh, execute it when we change anything so blender doesn't get so sluggish and i'm going to use a map range node in between so i can have some manual control over how the spectrum is mapped into the vertex colors and there is still our instancer visible. Let's get that out of the way. And with that setup we are done and we have a visualizer that is pretty unique and can be tweaked in a lot of different ways, ways like with uh, the different distances we can blend. We can adjust the sound spectrum node to give us different values. And we can also still change how the emitters behave, but we always have to remember to uh, set the update emitters boolean to true for a second and then deactivate it again otherwise the emitters will not update and the changes will not go through but i hope you like this tutorial and thank you for watching and see you next time No, there ain't no stopping us. Blah without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know you.